it's just like the UI UX experience is, has been something that's been thrown to the wayside when it comes to people getting involved um, on the development side in the space. Like pe people don't sign up to become a Bitcoin developer in order to make it look pretty. They do it because they, they the heavy lifting they feel um, is not that, it, it's, not, it's not the front end work basically. So um, or I, I shouldn't say no one does. I have met a, a, some uh, UX, UI devs um, like at conferences and stuff, but it's not a, it's not a, main, a major driver for many people who are working in the space, I'd say. Um, let's make it work first and then figure out how, how the experience should, uh, should uh, like feel and look afterwards. Um, and I, I do, I do have to sympathize the reason why that is simply because of how much there is to build, right? Now, how many more mm -hmm. things there is to go and experiment on. But mm -hmm. I, I think you're, I think you're spot on that the incentives is not really placed there specifically on the UI, mainly because you need a way to monetize that. And of course, in this space, we don't really want you to monetize that by selling your raw data for obvious reasons. So now you need to figure out a way. It, it, it's a Bitcoin wallet problem. Um, it's really any wallet problem, but you really need to figure out a way how to pay these people to move pixels around to make it look prettier. But at the end of the day, that's what gets your thousand X in your user growth, not the hundred core people that are using your app you know, you know, that you downloaded the APK and you're running it through Tor, right? People aren't going to deal with that slowness and the complexities. I need something that has 15,000 reviews in the app store, looks pretty easy to download. There's a video, you know, you know, my, my friend or so on and so forth told me about it and they showed me how easy it was. That's what you need. So it's, it's a Bitcoin wallet problem where there's really no monetization to get paid to make a Bitcoin wallet because you really only have two options there. I mean, in yourself, you know, an open source self-hosted you know, wallet, you only really have two options there. And that is one, you scalp the fees. So that means you're estimating a higher fee for the user. So it's costing them more money. Again, not a problem, but you're taking part of the fees, which means you have somewhat control over the wallet and what funds are there. Okay, so that's, that's an issue. And then your second part there is, make, you know, you don't want to you don't want to uh, store anything, you know, in the cloud or anything like that. But um, maybe, and this is what Moon has now done, and other uh, wallets in that nature, maybe because you now integrate both Bitcoin and Lightning, we'll just go and take a fee off of Lightning because you're routed through our channels. Okay, and we route through our channels for obvious reasons, but we're also the most connected or whatever the reasons that they give. Um, and that allows for that small amount of revenue to come in. Now again, how much revenue is it actually bringing in at, you know, 210 sats in the fee instead of, you know, 15 or, or two, if you had a channel, um, you know, one hop away from them or something like that, wherever you were sending it to. Um, and then, you know, kind of a third way, which is getting into uh, the wallet uh, problem there is instead of people writing down their keys, right, you can, again, Moon Wallet is a good example here. You can go and set up, you know, a, a backup and like a, like a backup for your backup, a fail safe for recovering anything in your wallet. You don't need to you know, tell a brand new person, hey, go and write down these 24 words and guard them with your life, right? Um, you know, go put them on a piece of steel, so on and so forth. You, you could simply say, hey, go and, you know, write down this key and make sure that you link your email address. And um, if you ever lose that, you know, click, you know, click recover, go and type in the key that you have and, you know, then you're good. Meaning the key is just, you know, a string of like, 12 digits or 16, you know, characters or something like that. Um, not necessarily okay. your 12 or 24 words actually wrote down number one dog, number two cat, um, that kind of thing. It's like, okay, this is, this is kind of like my, my recovery password if I need it. And then again, there's a second backup to that backup that says, um, you know, if you 
lose that key, there's a recovery process to contact our support and so on and so forth, right? Um, so you could offer kind of a service around there. But again, everything comes out of fees for a Bitcoin law. So exactly to your, you know, your, your, your um, answer that you gave me so well for my question, which was that uh, what, what did you see right now kind of going on in crypto? And it's again, DeFi 2.0, after all the blow up and you know, all the you know, uh, crap that was going on, still everybody's on you know, one of one NFTs and then obviously your stable coins. You know, if you can actually get you know, a really clean UI to make an NFT and it's secured by Bitcoin at lightning you know, transactional fee rates, right? One sat, two sats, right? That's amazing. You know, again, in 15 minutes or, or 15 seconds or less, same thing for DeFi, um, you know, DeFi crap, you know, like that. Whatever that means as, you know, um, the, the protocol gets, you know, a spread on the peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Again, UI in 15, 20 seconds, same thing for, you know, stable sets or whatever is, you know, being utilized um, on there. You can go... And you can scan the QR, right? Strike already does that in a sense, but it's kind of a barrier for people thinking of how to utilize that function. I can send my dollars from my phone into your lightning wallet within like three seconds or less. And that five seconds will give it a benefit of the doubt. You know, to me, that's kind of defeating the purpose of any form of stable coin, because you can still use the financial existing rails and receive a lightning payment. And you don't have to keep track of, you know, oh, I just, you know, I technically just bought, you know, 35 cents worth of Bitcoin, you know, on lightning, right? Um, but you need those click, or, yeah, quick, simple clicks, like a strike, you know, in those mm -hmm. other areas. I'm, I'm actually, I'm still waiting to see NFTs expand beyond sing, single networks. So as we know, most NFTs are minted on Ethereum. Um, why not a mint on another network as well, like Bitcoin? That way you have a more, sec more security in terms of using more public blockchains to back up that, that token. Um, and yeah, it, it kind of... Like just in case there's a failure of one network, you have more security in it uh, in in using more than one network. I, I um I I think I started the conversation earlier when Melissa was on like needing coffee, um, need more coffee. Essentially, yeah, I I think that that would be a good argument to kind of uh, allow Bitcoin to participate more, especially if it's done at a cheaper value because it's very expensive to mint. Uh, to mint on top of like Ethereum and some mm, other blockchains right now, not not necessarily so much. But nobody really like looks at other blockchains compared to Ethereum, at least for NFTs right now. So why not provide a a, a you know, strong backbone alongside that and use a second blockchain that is well? I mean, Bitcoin makes the most sense, and especially if you can do it at a cheaper price. And if Lightning, if you can do it so at, at the level of Satoshi's, then that's a uh, that's useful in many ways. That can allow Bitcoin to participate in the NFT space a lot, a lot more smoothly. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've always just thought that, like, why, why mint only on one network, on one public ledger, when you can use multiple ledgers to kind of um, provide more, like, what's the word? <laughs> I'm failing at English right now. But like a longer lasting record across multiple blockchains, because if one fails, which can happen, or if there's a failure upon one network, then you have others to, to, to fall back on. Um, that could be a way for the NFTs and Bitcoin to kind of enter the, the NFTs, I mean, the, the existing space as well. Well, like I said, as you know, we already have rare Pepe's and you can already go and use Counterparty all day long, XCP and issue your own, you know, um, Bitcoin NFT. Again, mm -hmm. the problem is it's it's challenging. It's very difficult to do versus somebody that goes to another chain and say, "Hey, upload your picture and 
pay a hundred dollars or pay fifty dollars and we'll go or ten whatever it is and we'll go and you know give you the information to prove that this is a one of one or this is an nft um and, and, and honestly bitcoiners don't even like um nfts for the one reason of mm -hmm. all of all of that information is stored on the bitcoin network again as we had the mempool um you know scrolling by the last block came in what 20 minutes ago 22 minutes ago um every time that transaction gets filled you add more block data and you blow it up the chain and therefore you build more transactions on somebody else's bitcoin node and which could potentially bog it down even more so you want to keep it as simple and as light as possible again the paradox there is you know everything has a duality where else are you going to go and store said record? That's the beauty of the Bitcoin network. If you're willing to pay for that op return message, you get that slot, right? So if somebody's willing to pay $5 to go and upload a pointer to their wonderful art piece or their digital gift or whatever they made, what's to stop them? It's a free and open network. More importantly than that, I've, I've given this argument uh, before, and I think I've actually recorded this too. It might be on our YouTube page. Um, I, th I think I have to look at the other video or I'll put the other video there um, for context. Who cares if you want to upload a, a, a cat picture to Bitcoin, right? I, I understand. You can't actually upload the picture itself, right? The JPEG is too big or the, you know, the, the file size is too big, right? There's only a finite size that goes in op return or that you can sign a message to, so on and so forth. You know, uh, 160 characters or um, um, uh, I'm blanking on the byte size, but again, it's a very small amount of byte. Right? But what's to say that that person is not willing to pay the miners, you know, 20 cents per byte times? Let's just make it up. Um, you know, uh, um, yeah, tw 20 cents per byte, and instead of a, a minimum 300 cents for one UTXO, it's um, uh, you know, 5,000 sats, right? So you're going to pay, you know, 20 times 5,000, you're going to pay, um, you know, 50,000 or 100,000 sats for this transaction, right? 100,000 sats at, you know, these prices, that's $20 or something. If somebody's willing to pay that price, I guarantee you the miners will pick up that transaction and confirm that because that's mm -hmm. above the 16 sat per byte that you're currently at right now. You would be stupid not to take that transaction, right? That's a profit. You know, that's, that's an increase, over, that's a premium on top of your fees. Again, going back to that, you know, prior, prior rebuttal, um, you're bloating the chain, which puts mm -hmm. you in this, you know, which puts you in this unique perspective. How do you bloat, how do you, how do you get the security of that art piece, right, without bloating the chain? And the simple answer is you can't, you have to pay. You know, and, and again, nobody in Bitcoin is going to tell you otherwise because they want the fees, whether that's the address, you know, whether you're using a, a certain Bitcoin wallet that, again, you know, collects on the fees. Um, you know, somebody does a spread, you know, so you can make a lightning payment for an on-chain fee. I know there's a couple places that do that, not NFT specifically or, you know, digital asset culture base, whatever. Um, but, um, okay, okay, like Ben the Carmen's um, op return bot, you can go and make a lightning payment that goes and so, that writes an opportun message on the blockchain. So it's technically an on-chain transaction, but you pay a lightning fee. So guess who's the arbiter there? You know, guess who's getting the spread? It's Ben the Carmen, right? Because he's taking the lightning payment and he's converting it into an on-chain UTXO. So he's obviously got to charge a premium on the lightning fee. So there is business models, you know, there. Um, it, but 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 at the core of that, I, I apologize for continuing on like that. Um, but but at the core of that, the moment that you copy, to me, that's the whole point of what a NFT is on any blockchain. It doesn't matter what it is. Bitcoin's time chain is the strongest, obviously, but it's all the same for anywhere else. Um, you have that asset originally tied to this transaction. Like that's the whole purpose. The moment that you go and take some F thing and put it on Bitcoin, which was talked about at one point and 
I know we got a real, real big pushback. Um, to me, rightly so. But um, you know, if you go and take a F NFT and you try to put it on Bitcoin, you're adding junk coin artwork to you know Bitcoin's you know time chain. Again, not that that's bad because if somebody's willing to pay the fees, have at it, go right ahead. Um, but to me, it, the essence is you are now copying that. Hmm. And that is therefore no longer a one of one. You have it hosted as a TXID on said blockchain and then also a secondary transaction identif- you know, identified number on Bitcoin. And of course, in that particular format, once you start copying things, now it just comes down to who was first. And then therefore, you know, that chain is always going to be priority for that specific artwork over, over Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, like I said at the beginning, it is way easier to make an NFT through some, you know, masterclass for, you know, $50, you know, go and upload your picture and this guy will, you know, do it for you with a couple buttons. You know, you tell him what you want it to look like, you know, when do you want it to go live and stuff like that. This is how much you pay um, versus you figuring out how to go and, it, go and get XCP, you know, for counterparty to go and make your own rare Pepe, right? It, you know, the, again, the, the user interface is so much cleaner on those other on those other chains versus you know a bitcoin native one so yeah I, yep. yeah I, I definitely agree um i was just also wondering about uh as you said if you choose to to mint an nft on top of bitcoin as long as you're paying for it then really right now like miners will will not say no um i guess there i can't remember there was a suggestion I don't know who said it, but there was a suggestion that you can technically prune out certain in- bits of information that you find to be irrelevant in the history of the network and still have a valid full node. And that, um, well, that's another argument, like what qualifies as a full node. If you if you drop a transaction, but you can still prove through the Merkle tree that like this... Um, this is part of the history, but you don't actually have it saved under your system or under your server. That that could, like, why would you want to keep necessarily a picture of a cat or a dog that's been hashed on top of the blockchain? You have the opportunity to to cut it out, and we do that to a certain extent with um, with with prune nodes as they exist. And supposedly, with the uh, I'm still learning about UTXO. Um, and how that's done and makes it basically makes the blockchain much smaller and usable so that you can manage an entire full node on top of a, a something as like like your phone uh, rather than using like 500 plus gigabytes hard drive. Um, I think there's still a w- there's still ways to allow for participation in that way. But I, I'm curious about on lightning, like what what mechanisms, exist on there to capture the the hash similar to off return and is it possible to not have that information leave that network can it still let's say can nfts only exist on that secondary network and and they kind of dissolve or disappear and have no uh they, no effect in terms of weighing down uh the size of the transaction as it defaults back to the main chain is there a way to do that possibly on the lightning network instead of um, what some would say corrupting the the, the cor- corrupting the main network, the main Bitcoin network by actually adding that information on and only to like keeping it on top of like the second layer. Yeah, excellent, excellent question, excellent point. Um, uh, the, the developer that I was mentioning uh, earlier, uh, he actually turned down a ten million dollar investment from a company to go and do exactly that. Um, and in the short, um, the only phrase that I can say. Is what I said earlier, you know, going along with J.P. Morgan's back at the, you know, end of the 18, 1800s, you know, beginning of the 20th century. You know, gold is money; everything else is credit. And to me, that applies to Bitcoin. The new phrase is Bitcoin is money; everything else is credit, um, including Lightning and again side chains, you know, so on and so forth. So to me, the short answer is no. You always have to have 
the security which falls back onto the Bitcoin base layer. Now, you did allude to something which has been in discussion, not only just on prune nodes, that's a whole you know, separate topic, but yes, you can go and basically only save two weeks of you know, a node and you're pretty much good, right? You've never had a chain roll back um, that far, let alone even come close to that. What's likely that it would happen in the future, slim to none. So uh, two weeks a month is good enough that you have. Even more so, you alluded to the actual um, I, I guess you could say sparse, sparsing, or I don't know if that's a term or a word, but um, it, it, you know, it, a in a, ha- a hash, a, a shorter hash of the verified data in said block to not only run a full node, but you're running a, if, if you will, a specialized full node, which you would have to go and look somewhere else for that data, you know, meaning I don't want, you know, to host the cat and dog pictures out of here per se, or this amount of that data. If I just have the block header, I'm good. And I understand that's exactly what a crew note is. But if I just have the block header and maybe a couple pieces of information about the opportunity, I'm good, right? I can save um, all of my data um, outside of, you know, um, you know, the, the necessary um, parts of that. So to me, in short, the answer is no, you can't do NFTs on Lightning. Um, for that reason, Bitcoin is money, everything else is credit. But in the long term, I'm sorry, not in the long term, but in a little bit longer answer, in more detail, I would say absolutely yes. And that goes into kind of a blend um, and there's companies already doing this right now. Um, again, the, the multi-million dollar uh, project um, funding is still out there. I am, again, doing my part into that. So in, in a sense, I can basically do three printable assets on you know, Bitcoin and you can do them as NFTs in a, in a sense, if you want to call it that. But again, it's just a verified you know, proof of print and then who created it, who designed it, where did it come for, from first? Um, and you could sell that digital file off of there. The nice thing about that is it's an actually digitally native file, right? Versus, you know, a, a physical sculpture. Um, you know, obviously you could turn that into a ball, you know, three file turns into something physical, but um, you do need something digitally native uh, for sure. You, you can't, you can't take something that physically exists and put it there again, you're copying it at that point. And, you know, somebody has to be the arbiter of that bridge and that's the whole centralized, you know, paradox. But I would say in uh, a longer description, yes, NFTs on Lightning is extremely easy to do in the sense of you are now parsing out certain amounts of the block data, which you can sign your message from your Lightning pub key to those transactions, you know, or to those PXIDs or to a um I, I again i understand the privacy concerns with this but just hear me out for for this idea uh or even before i say that idea there's companies like um cinnamon i know i mentioned them before at uh they're a subsidiary of um tether's parent company and um uh, what they're basically doing is exactly that making assets on lightning um to get that speed of all transactions and uniqueness you know per token or per nft whatever you want but all on lightning verified on the bitcoin network with the security of the bitcoin network same thing for a project called rgb i haven't heard too much about rgb um as of late uh because again i know i'm moving slow but i know they move they're moving quite slow as well uh, for for what they're um, for what they're doing. Again, same principles. You know, I can basically create a, a digital asset on top of a lightning channel. You know, based on whatever state is in there. But to me, it is probably as simple as taking a lightning channel, a, issuing a live recorded state that is being publicized to 
the people that need to know, and it could be the whole world or the whole public, a live state, right? Again, you lock up funds for a million big, or for a million cents or something, um, and um, you know you have a live state be updated every transaction, uh, right? Which would be tremendous, but we'll just keep it simple. And that would, you know, somehow verify th that this image was signed at this time height, at this time lock, I'm sorry, at this um, uh, time hash of when that was occurred. You know, wh wh when did that be issued or minted or however you want to define that? So, so, so the problem is it's not private at all because you have a public channel. And then secondly, not only do you have a public channel, but you're willingly sharing with the world what your live state of that channel is. Again, you open up a million set channel, 800,000 sitting on my side, 200,000 sitting on yours. This channel is, um, or this asset is issued. Now, 750,000 is on my side, 250,000 is on yours. So the moment that that payment went through at HTLC, well, we get the PTLC's point time lock contracts. Um, but when that HTLC um, was finalized, both pub keys signed the message and say, hey, I signed this message. You know, did you issue this asset at this time? Yes. And this is what Synonym is working on. Now you have a gossip layer on the back end of this. And this is the whole problem with NFTs on Lightning, which Bitcoin on chain solves. Everybody's running a node. Everybody's running that open source software. You can go and see right now, 38 minutes ago, when the last block was. And you can look in that time um, or in that block and you can see all those transactions, all the TXIDs, and you can verify. When did this one come in? It went from this address to this address. In this particular sense, for NFTs on Lightning, now you need this particular type of gossip network between two parties, which is shared throughout the world, right? So now you need a third person, and we have this now with watchtowers, but it's not being utilized for this, obviously. It's just to keep the you know, proper channels, their channels balanced for any bad actors. To um, John Corvallis' point over at Synonym, it's his project, his baby, and um, is running with it. Um, you need that gossip layer to go and prove who said what. So now it comes, you know, comes down to somebody else is running this this ledger, and then guess what? Now we're right back into the same game of running a different blockchain, right? Or somebody self-hosting you know, this information to verify that this person is, uh, you know, maintaining their behavior on the network as a good actor, right? So that right there is the problem with doing NFTs or anything one of one or um, uh, Bitcoin contracts at that level on Lightning. Uh, it, it's more so for NFTs and artwork and something like that. Contracts are pretty easy because it's just per peer authority money. You can open it, you can spin up a lightning node and you know, you can do that final settlement there. That's, that's fine after the channel's closed. But, you know, the state is open while the you know, mortgage is out. And then once the um, ownership transfers, you know, the payment, um, you know, goes through. Uh, but that's the ultimate problem with like NFTs and Bitcoin because, uh, on lightning, because you need that secondary layer outside of, the signed message to verify that message was truthfully signed by an observer. And so that's, that's kind of the ultimate you know, problem there. So now you need to go in and have that good faith. I can't remember how John phrases it, but um, it's a very common, it, it's, it's definitely trust um, as well. It's an obvious and trust is the most obvious word, but you have that trust layer between peers that the handshake was a good handshake. Obviously not, not only the handshake was, was, you know, executed, but you know, it was a quality handshake observed by a third party 
and that third party shared data outside of the data that the two peers shared. And of course, there's your challenging part. There's your, um, you know, multi-million dollar question. To me, um, I, I have a couple of solutions, um, you know, for that. Again, very simple, no blockchain needed, you know, um, no, um, no self-storage of, you know, things like that. You know, you know where you where we need you know, x x amount of space to go and store that data, but um, that is that is the ultimate part. You know, that to me that's the ultimate uh, challenge. How do you go and actually verify that work by somebody else? Um, you know, that, that transaction was good. Hmm. Definitely need to to catch up on um, these different projects. Plus, like NFTs are not my my thing. I actually think they're kind of uh, it, uh, pedestrian, might be the word. Um, but yeah. they're taking a theme, so something to take note of, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot to 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 look into. Uh, there's yeah, a yeah, tremendous yeah. amount of stuff. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie, as you know, there's there's a uh, there's an ever long list of Bitcoin related things to research, figure out, and solve. So yeah, you're yeah. definitely not the not the first one. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's gonna it's gonna take some time to kind of get back into the swing of things. Um, but yes, thank you very much for the the resources that you shared. Um, like there's, I'm, I'm far from like jumping into probably a developer course right away. I still have a lot of like review and, and study on cryptography and um, yeah, it's just actually I, I'm trying to learn Go right now because my, my Python and my Python skills are lacking. But um, yeah, I, I have a lot of work to do <laughs> before I can, I can properly jump into the space in the way I want to again. Yeah, that's awesome. Even if you're trying to learn a programming language, like you said, just to get your feet wet in, um, uh, you know, the certain computer science areas, uh, you know, that's where you're going to go and build that stuff. You know, and, you know, somebody's somebody's got to look at it, and, you know, see what's being implemented and how they can improve on that. So, yeah, if you can do that, that's even, yeah, that's even more better. This is the aim. <laughs> I'll add um, when when I when I upload this, I'll add synonyms um, links. I just copied the chat in there too, but I'll add some other links um, in there just for um, context and then RGB um, as well. Again, same thing for me. NFTs are not not at all really my focus. What my main focus is proving what came, you know, basically proving a, a certain manufacturing um, uh, standard. For a, for a product, let alone the machine themselves, but also where um, the asset originated from and that that original creator gets compensated accordingly. And what you inevitably come down to that path is, okay, and it is, it's, a, it's a multiple tube of, of things, but okay, you do have to touch base on, you know, why NFTs are what they are and why people like them. Um, you know, it is the verification that it came from this person or it's time locked here or whatever, but there's so many simpler ways to do it outside of, you know, some crap, uh, chain trying this project that we know there's, it's all, all the nodes are hosted on AWS, so on and so forth. Um, there, you know, there's gotta be a better distributed way. And then now you start to get into, you know, the other area of, you know, okay, how is it actually being transacted? You know what's a transfer process like you know outside of you know a centralized manner and then you know finally you know can people actually transact in dollars or are they transacting in actual sats we want everybody to go on a sat standard but you know you weren't in 2005 going to the grocery store killing off a little bit of gold right it's it's just it just wasn't practical same thing even in the 50s right it wasn't practical um 
even in the, yeah, even in the teens and you know the tens and teens and the eighteen eighties, it wasn't practical. You actually had a goal point to, for you. Yes, it was real gold. I understand that, or what what level it was, but um, you know we're all experiencing that exact same level today with with Bitcoin. How is it going to change? How is it going to get better, better, bigger, better, faster, stronger, more efficient as that time goes on? And all of these things apply at some weight or uh, level of attention um, that demands that focus in order to you know, bring it to market. But I, I, I think you're, I think you're asking a lot. Of, oh, that's the other one too. The uh, Bitcoin design um, team. It's not even a team, but it's just um, a couple of projects. Uh, but it, it, to me, that's the biggest thing. You kind of just said it right there many times earlier. It, it's the user interface, which improves that in experience to something so simple where you get the next, not 100,000 or million users, but you get the next 100 million users, right? It's the user interface of Robinhood or Coinbase, right? But in a BISC you know, kind of standard. Yeah, I have to find, find it. Um, there's a, again, it's just like an open collective. It's not a group. It's not a company. It's not anything. It's just all completely open source pro, um, collective that kind of started, you know, initiative, if you will, but it's called Bitcoin Design. And, you know, I'll have to find the link at a later date. But the community does exactly that. They, they're asking themselves, how can we make better hardware? How can we, uh, you know, make better Bitcoin wallets? How can we make better self-hosted software? Yeah, there you go. Bitcoin dot design. I'll put that in the chat. Uh, you know, those types of questions. How can you actually go and improve the network itself from an aesthetic and design user experience platform? And they made a whole guide and, uh, you know, how to, you know, uh, contribute again everything's free open source um uh, bitcoin tv is an awesome resource um as well that is you know again basically a uh, peer tube version of you know bitcoiners uh youtube's uh you know oops no, that's why it didn't work so uh, i know bitcoin design has a couple things up there as well i got a couple things um there too but that's another place to you know, kind of check out again. I don't want to keep bombarding you with links, but as I look, I'm like, oh yeah, there's this one too, and oh yeah, there's this one too. So, um, yeah, and I think they even have a, a guide too for somebody in your position that just wants to kind of get involved at the code base level. The simplest thing is go and make a GitHub page and start looking at the code, meaning um, for any like typos, just in general description. You know, you know, maybe somebody misspelled two by accident or misplaced a, a period or a punctuation mark. Uh, those are great entries to conversing with the actual developers themselves, but also adding valid contributions instead of you going out. And, oh, yeah, I need to learn how to, you know, read, go and, you know, uh, you know implement this before I can you know, go and make a issue or a PR, um, just go and look for spell checks on like your favorite Bitcoin projects. Like they need the, they need the help and that's a good foot in the door. Cool beans. Yeah. Open source and, and across the board actually. <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the really, I, I, the idea is I'm just curious because the, the more I explore, the more tools I have in my tool belt, you know, I, the more I can like ask, tougher questions and, and kind of tinker and play around. Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely, well, it's just, it's just been a while. I haven't actually taken a look at uh, that many GitHub pages recently um, or projects with the, like the one I mentioned earlier, U3XO does seem interesting because I, I've, the team that's been working on it has, I, they've come out with more updates and, so it seems like it's 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 coming along, um, yeah. And the more aware I am in general of different and interesting projects out there, the more opportunity there is to participate. The more opportunity there is to 
to kind of identify where I where like where I can help out out later. So yeah. Um yeah. on um Utrea XO, I just added another um link. This is probably another great place to start in regards of you know protocol development and actual real cryptography. Uh Bitcoin oh, yeah. Um, BitcoinOptech.org. Oh. I don't know if you've heard of them or not, but um, definitely go and check out. Oh, have you? Yeah, they they, they run the newsletter. The the yes. one we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you're good. Then I don't need to share that link. But yeah, go and dig in. Go and join their um, chats on Wednesday. Oh, where's that? It is on uh, free. Oh, where's that? Because like the I, I used to join the IRC chats, but I haven't been up. Thank you. Yeah, IRC Free Node is is their channel that they run on there. Yeah, and again, you know how you know yeah how many people are on IRC, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a whole another that's a whole another thing. But um, yeah, what what uh I think it's John Newberry that still runs it. If I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I John don't. Newberry runs it. Yeah, J James O'Byrne joined. Um, John Attack joined. Steve Lee over at Spiral joined too. Uh, so you got a couple. You got a couple people there. Cool beats. Yep. Yeah, the the op tech is is a great way to, to keep uh, keep up to date with a, like a, a lot of what people are doing in the space. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. We'll do. Thank you.